The Slayer form is a powerful ability only granted to a dedicated follower of Ball. In this video, I'm going to show you the three ways to obtain the ability, how it affects the story and your relationships to companions, and then towards the end, I'll go over its powerful abilities and stats. This video is full of spoilers, so I'll make chapters down below if you just want to skip ahead and see what the Slayer can do. Alright, before we get into spoilers, I have to note that the only way to get the Slayer form is if you play as the Dark Urge. Okay, everything from this point until I show off the stats and abilities is Wumbo Jumbo spoilers. Big time spoilers, so here's your spoiler warning. So to obtain the Slayer form, you have three options. Your first opportunity will present itself shortly after arriving in Act 2. Once you've made it to the Last Light Inn, your butler, Scleritus Fell, will arrive in your camp after a long rest and task you with killing the Cleric Isabel. Now you can go about this one of two ways. The first is by killing her directly yourself, which if done at the beginning of Act 2 will bring down the barrier protecting the Last Light Inn, killing everyone here except your party and Jahira. She will then question you and will become hostile after the Last Light Inn fight unless you pass a deception or persuasion check. Now I've heard there's ways to kill Isabel without killing everybody at the Last Light Inn, but I haven't actually done that myself or tried to. So if you guys want to share that down in the comments, I'll be sure to try to pin it or heart the comment so other people can see it. The second way to do it is indirectly by letting Shadowheart kill the Night Song. This will in turn kill Isabel along with the rest of the Last Light Inn, including Jahira, as the barrier will go down and Jahira will die off screen. Either way, once you successfully complete this dark deed, Scalaritus Fell will visit you in your camp shortly after and reward you with the Slayer form. I come with your disgusting prize. Now, if you didn't go through with killing Isabel shortly after meeting her, Scalaritus Fell will visit you again at your camp after a long rest and warn you that you will kill your closest companion or lover that very same night. So this brings us to opportunity two. After being told this terrible news and going to sleep, a cutscene will trigger where your character will hover over your companion and presented with the option to kill or to resist the urge. If you decline or try to resist, you'll have to make three rolls to prevent yourself from doing it. I think it's the same for everybody, but all three rolls for me were wisdom rolls. The first one was a DC 14, second one was a DC of 18 with advantage, and the third one was a DC of 18 without advantage. If you do kill your companion, you'll have to make a DC 30 deception roll or fight your whole entire camp. So it's almost impossible to successfully roll that. Odds are you're gonna have to kill everybody in your camp, all of your companions included. So I see this as probably the worst option unless you're really going for a pure evil playthrough where you just don't care who dies. If you do decide to decline both of these options, you'll have one final chance to please Ball and acquire the Slayer form. This final opportunity will come in Act 3 once you track down Orin and you fight her. Now one thing to know is if you have acquired the Slayer form before this fight, she will not have the Slayer form, otherwise you will have to fight her with her Slayer form. Once you defeat her, you're presented with the option to accept Ball's gift or decline, and this decision is going to have extreme ramifications on the story, so just be warned, choosing to accept the gift is going to kind of lock you into two different endings. From what I've seen, both of them are pretty bad endings. One of them's really bad, one of them's kind of bad, and if you refuse the gift, that'll put you into the good side ending. But choosing to accept the gift will reward you with the Slayer form, and it will reward you with the spell Power Word Kill, which is a level 9 enchantment spell that lets you compel a creature with 100 hit points or fewer to die instantly, and you can only use this once. Also, if you do decide to accept the gift, Jahira will be waiting outside the temple. Whether she's with you at, at that time or not, she'll be outside the temple waiting to attack you, and you will have to kill her. Now, if you had already acquired the Slayer form prior to this, and you choose to decline Ball's gift, you will lose access to the Slayer form. So this is kind of the final pivotal moment where you decide if you want to keep the Slayer form or never have it again. Manifest your savage compulsions and assume your sinuously deadly Slayer form. Your Slayer form has 98 hit points, increases to 153 at level 10. While in Slayer form, you can't talk or cast spells. You take on the ability scores of the Slayer, excluding your intelligence, wisdom, and charisma scores. Ignore that part, it's actually false. You take on all of the ability scores of the Slayer. When the Slayer form drops to zero hit points, you revert to your normal form, and you can use this once per long rest, and it's a bonus action. Okay, so here are the Slayer form stats, and contrary to what it says, all of your stats are actually affected by the transformation. 
automation. So you have a strength of 25, which is pretty notable. That's extremely high. And then you have the passive feature, Slayer's Improved Extra Attack. You can make two additional attacks after attacking with your main hand weapon. This essentially gives you three attacks per action. As far as your armor class, you'll have a low armor class. It's only 16, but there is a way to increase it, which I'll show you later. Now, these are the stats for it if you get it in Act 2. I don't know how it scales, whether it's by level or story progression, the Darker Roots story progression, but you only have 20 strength, um, and that'll scale up to 25. The Slayer's first action is Slay. This does 13 to 43 slashing damage. Rake your malevolent claws across the body of your target. If the target is bleeding, they're afflicted with Contagion Poison Stage 1. So while they have that condition, the affected entity has disadvantage on attack rolls and checks. Each turn, it must succeed a saving throw or the poisoning will worsen. On three successes, it recovers. Three failures, it contracts a disease. So if you've seen the Contagion spell, uh, this is the same thing. And if you don't know what that does, I'll link my spell guide video up top. If the target is prone, the attack will be a critical hit. If the target is bleeding and prone, the attack will be a critical hit and the target will possibly become stricken with flesh rot. So that'll just straight up give them the disease right away. Rotting in their own vat of stinking skin, the affected entity has disadvantage on charisma checks and vulnerability to all damage. So they're going to take twice as much damage from all damage types. And stricken with flesh rot will last until a long rest or until they are cured by a spell. So here I've got a bleeding target. There he was hit. And now he has the condition Contagion Poisoned Stage 1. Here I have a prone and bleeding target, so it's going to be a crit. And uh, if they had enough HP, it would give them the disease, possibly. I wasn't able to find any enemies nearby that had enough HP to show you guys that part of it. For our next attack, we have Multi-Attack. So this says 8 to 40 damage. Just ignore that. That isn't correct. It does four different instances of 1d4 slashing damage. And then I don't know where this 46 slashing conditional comes from. I've tried this so many times, I haven't been able to trigger it. If you guys are able to, uh, just let me know down in the comments and I'll pin that comment for everybody to see. But until that happens, just ignore this. Lash out with your claws, rending foes to screeching slivers. If the target is bleeding, you deal an additional 7 slashing damage per hit. If the target is dazed, the attack will be a critical hit. Okay, so I made this little chart here in the notes app really quick just to show you guys. Hopefully it explains it better. If it doesn't, um, you know, I'm not a pro in algebra. I'm not Oppenheimer. We're not making the atomic bomb here, but this does four separate attack rolls. So here with a basic attack, assuming they don't have bleeding or daze, it's going to do four to 16 damage. Also assuming no crits because you can still crit on some of the hits and that's one to four damage per hit. Here's kind of a little equation I did on the right side to show how the damage numbers will come out. Bleeding, it's going to do 32 to 44 damage, assuming no crits, eight to 11 damage per hit. And then dazed is eight to 32 damage or two to eight damage per hit. Bleeding and dazed is going to be 36 to 60 damage or nine to 15 per hit. So hopefully that made it a little easier to understand. So here's that attack against the dazed and bleeding target for the maximum damage possible. After that, he has Sumptuous Bloodbath. This does 3 to 30 slashing damage. Slash open a foe's vital arteries. They start bleeding, and the ensuing gush continuously heals your wounds. The bleeding effect will make them take 2 slashing damage at the start of their turn, and they'll have disadvantage on constitution saving throws. So that'll go on for 3 turns, and the healing will go on for 3 turns. It says here you'll heal for 4 to 24 hit points per turn. On a save, they're still going to take half damage. Now he's bleeding. So I'll end my turn here. Took two slashing damage. Here, back to my turn. I healed for eight. Next up is Piercing Growl, which does seven to 28 piercing damage. Fierce howls rise from your guts and wound nearby foes, possibly inflicting bleeding and fear. So we went over bleeding already. Fear, the affected entity will have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. It must run from the source of its fear and can't take any additional actions. So that bleeding will go on for two turns and the fear will go for two turns as well. On a save, they're still gonna take half damage. There we go. This guy's bleeding in fear. This guy also has bleeding and fear. After that is Relentless Lunge. This does 11 to 31 bludgeoning damage. Leap sinuously and smash into your foes, possibly knocking them prone for two turns. With prone, they can't move or take actions, bonus actions, or reactions, and they'll have disadvantage on strength and dexterity saving throws. Attacks against the creature have advantage if they're made within 10 feet, and a prone creature must spend half its movement speed to stand up. This is a bonus action as well, and it uses 10 feet of movement speed, so you can always follow it up with a normal attack. So these two were saved, but this guy was knocked prone. He took 20 damage. And the final action for the Slayer is let the slaughter begin. Brand nearby creatures with a sinister mark so that their deaths make you harder to kill. Marked targets are dazed, and when they die, you gain a plus one bonus to armor class. Dazed, they'll have disadvantage on wisdom saving throws, and they can't take reactions. Also, they lose their dexterity bonus to their armor class. Removed if an ally helps the creature. So that mark will last for four turns, and that's the time you have to kill them to get the armor class bonus, and they're dazed for one turn. So I mentioned before, my AC is 16 currently, if I use this, here's the AoE of it. It's a pretty big range. This rolls against Constitution, so it's only 15% chance against these guys. 
There we go. Got a couple of them. So I got two marked. The rest were saved. These guys have pretty high constitution, so I take out this guy here. I got Bal's boon. So now my armor class is now 17. And one thing that isn't mentioned is you lose the AC bonus if you dodge an attack. And then on top of that, you also have a dash, hide, jump, and disengage. And that's going to cover everything for the Slayer form in Baldur's Gate 3. If you guys did enjoy this video, hit that like button. It helps me out quite a bit. Don't forget to subscribe if you guys want to see more content like this. And hit me down in the comments with some suggestions for future videos. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.